Elvis Presley has a few songs that could be considered his signature song. One of them is Blue Suede Shoes. In 1956, it sold half a million copies in the USA alone. It's the opening track to Elvis Presley's debut album. But it was actually written and released eight months earlier by Carl Perkins. Well, it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, now go cat, go, but don't go. step on my blue station. Perkins' version wasn't obscure either. At the time, it was the first record by a country artist to reach number three on the R&B charts and at one point they were shipping around 20,000 copies a day. Within four months of its release, it had sold over a million copies. Both Elvis Presley and Carl Perkins signed for Sun Records in 1954. Carl Perkins was signed after just his second audition. Elvis had to pay for his own studio time at Sun, cutting four songs on two acetates before getting the chance to audition. The two artists had similar tastes and were both keen to record rockabilly songs. Sun Records owner and producer Sam Phillips didn't see the point of having two artists with the same sound, so encouraged Perkins to focus on more country-style music, leaving Presley to be the label's rockabilly artist. Elvis's first five singles on Sun failed to chart, and although Sam Phillips was in no doubt of Elvis's potential, he decided to cash in, and in November 1955 he sold Presley's contract to RCA Victor for $40,000. That's around $350,000 in today's money. The deal was brokered by Andreas van Kalk, an undocumented Dutch immigrant who changed his name to Tom Parker to avoid detection and deportation. He was given the title Colonel by Jimmy Davis after helping the former country singer get elected governor of Louisiana. Colonel Tom Parker had allegedly fled the Netherlands to avoid being questioned in relation to a murder, but that's a story for another day. With Elvis no longer at Sun Records, Carl Perkins was free to record the style of songs he wanted. The first song he cut was Honey Don't and he followed that with blue suede shoes. Fellow Sun Records artist Johnny Cash provided the inspiration for the song, as drummer W.S. Fluke Holland recounts. I was riding in the car with uh, Marshall, and John and Carl were sitting in the back seat, and uh, John was sitting in the back with his feet propped up on the front of the, back of the front seat, and he's looking at his foot sticking up, and he said, Carl, you ought to write a song about some shoes. And that's about all of us to it. And, uh, little, and then a little while ago, I said, well, you, maybe you ought to write a song about some blue suede shoes or something. Cash had remembered someone he had met in the army who referred to his army issue black shoes as blue suede shoes on the weekends and nights out. Perkins didn't act on the suggestion until he witnessed a couple arguing on the dance floor at one of his own gigs. This cat one night had on a pair. He was dancing with a beautiful girl who had on a pleated skirt, and they did a lot of turning. And he said, uh-uh, don't step on my suede. And he wasn't joking. And he heard her feelings, and her, her pretty face said, oh, well, excuse me. And I thought, you fool. I'd like to have a pair of them shoes, but I, I would never tell a beautiful girl not to step on. With this newfound inspiration to write a song, Carl Perkins thought up the lyrics for Blue Suede Shoes just about as quickly as he could write them down, not even waiting until he had a piece of paper to do so. And I wrote Blue Suede Shoes on a brown paper bag. All I was having to do was pick out the lines. They were flooding my soul. Just, and I was thinking of things like burn my house, steal my car, drink my liquor from Whole Foods. I, I was just getting it down as fast as I could. Although Elvis's contract with Sun had been transferred to RCA Victor, Elvis still had a few live gigs booked with the other Sun Records artists. On December 12, 1955, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash and Carl Perkins played a concert at the National Guard Armory in Amory, Mississippi. Uh, I remember a little town called Amory, Mississippi that when Elvis came on, they were hollering, we want Carl, we want Carl. And that, it really hurt me. I stood beside the stage and I said, oh, please, please don't do that. This boy's never heard that in his life. Two nights in a row that happened, and uh, I never uh, did another show with Elvis. It didn't make me feel that good. Despite there being Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash on the lineup, for the locals in Amory, it was Carl Perkins that stayed in their memory. You still run into people, 
even now, they say, well, I was at that, that show that night at the Armory. Oh, yeah, man, I remember Carl Perkins, he just stole the show. Elvis Presley was there, but Carl Perkins really stole the show. Everybody would holler every time you go backstage. They'd clap their hands and holler, oh, Carl Perkins. So they would let him come back out. I think he played uh, Blue Suede Shoes several times. Blue Suede Shoes, uh, Carl Perkins uh, sung that. Uh, and I don't remember what uh, Elvis sung. It was the last time that Elvis and Carl Perkins appeared on the same lineup, and a week later Perkins went into the studio and recorded Blue Suede Shoes. It was released in January 1956, with Honey Doe on the B-side. The single became a regional hit almost instantly, and it seemed like this song would provide Perkins the break he'd always dreamed of. In the early days of recorded pop music, it wasn't unusual for there to be multiple cover versions of a song released, often very soon after the original. Carl Perkins recorded his version on December 19th, 1955. Elvis recorded his on January 30th, 1956. This was at the instruction of his new label, RCA Victor, who wanted to promote Elvis as a rock and roll artist and thought the songs they had acquired from Sun Records as part of the deal were a little bit too country. As Elvis knew Perkins and the Sun Records owner and producer, Sam Phillips, he was reluctant to release a competing version, so he insisted that the release of his version be delayed to allow Perkins' single a chance for success. Despite holding back on releasing the song as a single, Elvis added the song to his live set and it was the opening track on his debut album, released on March 13th, 1956. By March, Blue Suede Shoes had reached number two in the charts. It was only held off the top spot by Elvis Presley's Heartbreak Hotel. And on March 22nd, 1956, Carl Perkins and his band, which included his two brothers Clayton and Jay, were driving to New York City to make a series of high-profile TV appearances when they were involved in a serious car accident. The driver of the truck they hit died and Perkins was hospitalised along with his brother Jay. The following day Elvis sent a telegram to Carl in hospital wishing him a speedy recovery. Obviously Elvis wasn't a household name yet, the Western Union operator incorrectly listed Elvis Presley as the sender. I was on my way to do Perry Como show March the 22nd. I already had signed for the Ed Sullivan show the following week and the TV exposure was fixing to happen and it would have been the right time for me to uh you know cash in on my hit record but it, that wasn't to be about daylight on march the 22nd we uh the driver who was driving my barred car uh hit the back of a pickup truck it killed the driver of that truck and I was out of commission. I had a fractured skull. I had a broken shoulder. It was cut very bad, uh, over 50% of my body. And it was during that time I was laying in my hospital bed when Elvis was on, uh, he said, I'm going to do my new record. And he, he did Blue Suede Shoes. And, uh, I knew then, you know, that that was, that was going to stop me. On April 3rd, less than two weeks after the accident, Carl Perkins, still in a full body cast, lay in his hospital bed and watched Elvis debut his new song. Perkins and his band unable to continue the gruelling touring schedule to promote the hit single, sales slowed down and the single slipped down the charts. After recovering from his injuries, Carl Perkins and his band went back on the road. They finally managed to make it onto the Perry Como show, although Perkins' brother Jay, who had suffered a fractured neck in the accident, was still wearing his neck brace on the TV performance. Yeah, you can do anything but lay off my blue with you. Yeah. The other TV show appearances were not rescheduled, and it seemed Carl's big moment had passed. He was a great guitar player and a talented songwriter, 
but he felt he just couldn't compete with Elvis's Hollywood looks, even comparing himself to Mr. Ed, a talking horse from a 1960s sitcom. When I first saw him, I, I thought there's no way to keep this boy from being the biggest thing in the business. He's got it all. He didn't look like Mr. Ed. I had that problem. You know, I came out ugly. I'm bad ugly. And to be on stage with a, 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 a cat that looked like Hollywood before he ever knew where California was, I knew he had all the assets. Elvis was now dominating popular music. His first four singles for RCA Victor all went to number one. The album also went to number one. And it was the first pop album on the label to make over a million dollars. In August 1956, RCA Victor made the bold and unheard of move of releasing all the remaining songs on the album as singles individually, including Blue Suede Shoes. Elvis's version of the song only managed to reach number 20. But as more than a dozen different artists released versions of Blue Suede Shoes in 1956, it was already becoming less clear which one was the original. In 1960, Elvis starred in his fifth movie, G.I. Blues. In the movie, he plays an army specialist with dreams of being a singer, and in one scene, someone selects Blue Suede Shoes by Elvis Presley on a jukebox, saying he wants to hear the original. Anytime you'd call, I guess I was the only one who did well, it's one for the money, two for the show. What are you doing? Right? You get it ready? So what? I want to hear the original. Turn that thing off! Turn it off! I'll cut it off, cookie! Don't do it! See that? <laughs> Already the song had become a signature song of Elvis Presley. Carl Perkins tried hard to find another hit with Sun Records, but nothing matched Blue Suede Shoes. And in 1958, he left Sun and signed for Columbia, a move he would come to regret. The biggest mistake I ever made in my life, I couldn't, I shouldn't have found any reason big enough to take me away from Sun Studios in Memphis. That's the environment I should have stayed in. That's where if there was to be any more shoes records that's where they would have come from and i look back after i've left there i went into the nashville scene and and they put great players but they wasn't rockers uh i got mixed up in them big studios with people that didn't understand rockabilly music trying to record me and uh i think it's uh, i think i suffered from that in 1964, Perkins toured the UK with Chuck Berry. He was initially unwilling to go as he feared he would be unknown to British audiences. But Chuck Berry convinced him, and sure enough, they played to packed out venues every single night. On the last night of the tour, Perkins attended a party, and there he met the Beatles, who personally asked if they could cover some of his songs. It's probably the greatest move i ever made in my life. I crawled on that little plane in Jackson, Tennessee. I went alone with my guitar and my memories of home. And, and I got over there and I did the tour with him, with Chuck, after the tour. I was invited to a party. I started not to go. I said, man, I gotta go to Tennessee in the morning. This was the promoter of the show. And he said, you, you might ought to go to this one. Uh, I said, okay, but I can't stay long. So I went, walked in this castle and uh, I saw a dude standing at the end of a a table like we don't have in Tennessee, man. It had whole hogs. It, the, the cat had put the <laughs> apple in the mouth, you know. Turkeys with their little socks on their, mm -hmm. you know, their, where their feet used to be. I mean, it was a feast. <clears throat> and I told the guy that, uh, uh, the booking agent, I said, that, that boy at the end of that table looks just like one of them little beetles, that, that Ringo. He said, I got news for you, Perkins. That is Ringo. At that point, Ringo spotted us. We just walked in the hall of this big, beautiful mansion, and uh, he stepped up in a chair and he tapped on a high-priced silver with a spoon or something. Everybody hushed. He said, "Ladies and gentlemen, he's here, Mr. Carl Perkins." I looked around to see who they were talking about. Yeah, right. But it was for it was, the party was for me, and I I wound up sitting on the floor. Uh, with a rhythm guitar, and there sat John, Paul, George, and Ringo on a couch like this, asking me, uh, uh, George, was saying, how did you kick off a right string with the wrong yo-yo? And I, he was blowing my mind. I'd forgotten that was an old son song. He said, no, that's not hardly the way, but that's close enough. He knew every lick I ever had. And uh, that night, they invited me to uh, 
recording studio at Abbey Road, uh, Abbey Road, yeah. It wasn't blue suede shoes that the Beatles decided to cover. Instead, they chose to cover the B-side, Honey Don't. Paul McCartney would later credit Carl Perkins as a major influence for the Beatles, stating, if there were no Carl Perkins, there would be no Beatles. They cut Matchbox, they cut George saying, everybody's trying to be my baby. Now, Rhea, try, if you can, to imagine an old broken down alcoholic sitting in a chair in London, England, hearing his old songs that he, he didn't know anybody knew. And there was a group singing them back. And I listened to the playbacks with George Martin. I shook. My soul shook. I left England with a complete different attitude. These little guys uh, gave me some strength that I needed at that time. Despite never reaching the heights of his former label mate, Carl Perkins' name will forever remain attached to one of Elvis Presley's most recognisable hits. Now what do you think? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to get all the latest videos.